Our region's business is sponsored by PNC for the achiever in you. Welcome to Our Region's Business with your host, Bill Flanagan. Today, Our Region's Business is on location at the Squirrel Hill branch of the Carnegie Library of Pittsburgh, one of our region's most exceptional places to curl up with a good book. And we'll explore why in just a bit. We're here today because we're delving inside the pages of several good books as we peruse the Our Region's Business bookshelf. So stick around for the seven time-tested leadership principles practiced by the Pittsburgh Steelers. Learn why advice is for winners from a man who launched the highly successful search engine company Vivissimo just across the street. We'll get more winning business advice from former toll grade CEO Chris Allison and we'll dabble in a little bit of history. The true story of how steel from our region literally built America and some alternate histories sprouting from our region as well. We begin our literary journey today with a new book that examines the business lessons to be learned by an organization near and dear to our region, the Pittsburgh Steelers. The team's known for a leadership style that extends beyond the front office to the players and support staff, something called the Steelers Way. What is it and how do you put it to work inside your organization? Well, the answers are right here in a new book, Forged in Steel, the seven time-tested leadership principles practiced by the Pittsburgh Steelers. Tunch Ilkin co-wrote the book with Damian Williams. Tunch is, of course, a Steelers player turned broadcast analyst. Damian Williams helped them put it all on paper. He's the CEO of the Leadership League. Recently, I enjoyed the opportunity to sit down with them in the studio. I always like to talk about Steelers and, and a tremendous record of success and what we all can learn from that. But first, a little bit about the Leadership League. What exactly is that? Leadership League started in 2006, and really what we do is we help leaders change, grow, and transform. And as they change, grow, and transform, they're able to be transformational leaders in their uh, company and really in the community at, at large. Okay, so Tunch, how did you get involved with all this? You know, uh, Damien actually had had uh, a few events years ago, I guess we met in 2005, right, right. and uh, as we started uh, doing these events together, and he, w I would come and speak, and, and uh, you know, people want to hear about the Steelers, and so I just started sharing my experience with the Steelers, and everything that I learned about leadership, I learned in my 34 years here uh, in Pittsburgh. And so as we started uh, uh, doing these uh, conferences together, he looked at me and said, he goes, you know, there, there's a book here. And so that's uh, how this whole thing started. And that's, that's a little, uh, well, yeah, what did you hear? Well, what, yeah. let, me, let me just say this. As Tunch was sharing all the stories and all the things that he learned from the Rooney family and Chuck Knoll, now I, I turned 39 this April. And so I started thinking about my business and I started thinking about the businesses that I, that I coach. And I thought, you know what? our generation isn't thinking about these things. Mm -hmm. There are time-tested leadership principles that if we apply them day in and day out, we're going to be successful. Well, my generation and younger, they're looking for the latest fad, the newest technology, and you know, frankly, our minds are on overload. And so I told Tunch, I said, we need to write a book that encourages and motivates leaders to get back to the basics mm -hmm. because you can't do better than the basics. No, it makes a lot of sense. Well, there's always that temptation. You know, you want to go for the long bomb, right? right. Drive it into the end zone from 60 yards <laughs> out. It, yeah. it doesn't happen all that often, right? No, you know, and Bill, I think one of the things that, uh, one of the things that you can see when you're, uh, first of all, there is a great sense of humility. Uh, mm -hmm. yep. and, it, and it started with the chief. You know, uh, the first time I met the chief was before the draft, and three of us are uh, potential draftees are sitting in the Steelers lobby with the four Super Bowl trophies and the mural, the Steelers at, uh, and Raiders AFC Championship game. And we just met the orthopedic surgeon. We're getting ready to meet Chuck, and the chief walks in. And he's dressed kind of <laughs> yeah. casually. He's got a cardigan on, and it's kind of misbuttoned, and he's got a golf shirt that's buttoned to the top. And he's got a giant ashtray, and he's putting all the, the, the small ashtrays. He's actually cleaning up the ashtrays in the lobby. This is the owner. This is a Hall of Fame uh, Art Rooney. And, and the chief introduces himself to, or he asks her, her name's, yes, the Ted Walton says, I'm Ted Walton. I said, I'm Ted Shilkin. And then there's a guy sitting on the end. I'm not going to say his name. And when he introduces himself, he says, so are you the janitor here? And I remember yeah. the chief laughed and he, and he said, I do a little of everything around here. <laughs> and what really spoke volumes to me is that he was actually honored right. to be thought of right. as a regular working guy. He goes, I'm just the guy from the north side. You know, he mm. had that don't be a big shot attitude. And that attitude carried uh, from generation to generation. The ambassadors, every bit right. as 
humble as the chief was, and, and Art the second is every bit as as uh, humble as his father and his, his grandfather. And what is it about humility that makes you a better leader? I would think it would be the opposite. You want to be hard charging. You want people to jump no, in line and help I, them I, I take think the hill. That's a tremendous point, Bill. And here's the reality: people don't care how talented you are. They don't care how driven you are. See, you can get to the mountain at the top. I've heard people say it's lonely at the top. Mm -hmm. Well, if that's true, you're not a leader mm -hmm. because leaders take people with them. So yeah, you can be successful. You can have a great idea. You can have some new technology platform, but if it's all about you and it's all about your own personal success and being a big shot, it's not going to be sustainable. When you're right. part of this organization, you feel genuinely cared for. So I think, and, and by, sh by being a humble leader, People can identify. You're not that guy that's right. in the in the corner office that's right. in, behind the big desk. You're a guy that, like the uh, Mr. Either one of the, whether it's the ambassador, whether it's Art the Second, they they're just talking to everybody like like you're one of them. And I mm. think that once again, uh, you know, uh, the chief lived on the north side till he passed. The ambassador lives on the north side. Uh, I just think that you know they're 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 from the north side. It, and it's kind of like the core of Pittsburgh in, in many ways. Well, and it strikes me it's very much a regional right. cultural right. issue. Well, okay, we've, there's seven time-tested <laughs> leadership principles. We've managed to cover one. Yeah. So I guess that's an excuse for folks to go out and find the book. Where is it? How do they get a hold of it? Amazon.com, or they can go on forgedinsteel.biz and okay. order it there. Very cool. Damian Williams of the Leadership League, Twin Shilk, and thank you both so much. Great for having Thanks for having us, Bill. Yeah. When we come back, sage business advice from some of our region's successful CEOs have decided to share their insights in a handy read anywhere form. Don't go away.